everybody, and welcome to another Harry Man movie night. Gonna have fun tonight with the Ape Man, Bella Lugosi. Yes, and it is a double feature. Yes, we're gonna have a double feature. The second one is called In the Beginning Homo Erectus, presented by Richard Leakey. So that is going to be good. I've not seen it. I've only seen the first five minutes to make sure it was running. So it will be interesting. The chat is a hop in. I see about 17 in right now. Thank you for being here. We're going to have fun and I, we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to bring on my lovely co-host, Minnie. Hello, Jen. Hello. Welcome. I see I got my How sunflowers and my tarot corn in there. <laughs> <laughs> I tried to fit as much as possible. I had to take stuff out. <laughs> I was like, that's overkill. That's too much. That is definitely too much. I need to take that off to fit everybody in here. So next week... Mr. Joe, thanks for taking Hello, welcome, welcome. I was uh, our last guest ready. Okay, he's already. <laughs> he's giving me the thumbs up. <laughs> welcome, That's Leon, to the welcome show. To you guys therapy. ready for this? You're gonna see if this works. Oh, yeah, it's totally. like a yeah, struggle. Totally. <laughs> It'll totally be fun. I so think at the, at the end of Leon's entrance, he's, he still should have that bop. Yeah, yeah, probably, huh? Right at the end. <laughs> I wanted to give him something new. Something new. But hey, guys, we're going to go ahead and get started with the show. So uh, we're going to have fun with it. And I hope you guys all have fun. I hope you all have your popcorn. Wow. Ready to go. Uh, down in front, everybody. Take your seats and uh, we'll get started with the show. If I can get it to work, we'll see. <laughs> hear it okay a little louder would be good oh wait wait yeah i'm old Yours, Uncle Sam. 
Yeah, and you'll be seeing plenty of cold gray dawn then, brother. You'll find out that the signal court there's a lot of other things besides four signals. After ten years in this bracket, it'll be a vacation. <laughs> a simple soul, isn't he, boys? Woo! <laughs> Did he make a reference with the one-eyed monster? Yes. <laughs> yes, he did. Well, what do you think of that? Now, face you to me. Funny. What do you think of that? Uh, but I'm not Dr. Randall, no? Yes. Did you hear me? I just I, well, I what was that all about? <laughs> You're part of the Globe Tribune, aren't you? Uh huh. Say, there's a woman on that boat with the name of Agatha Bruce. Yeah, what about her? Ghost. She's a sister of that uh, missing Dr. Bruce. Good story. A great story. Yeah. What's this, Jeff? Mind to sell your bootleg gas? Yeah, well, it's cool, I guess. Can you turn up the video, uh, the volume a little bit? Uh, That's her over there with the fur piece. I did. No, no, I'm... I guess I'm awfully glad you're here. Come on, Bonnie. George, it's terrible. What happened? Mr. Brewster? Yes. I'm from the Globe Preview. Well? Miss Brewster's too upset over her brother to give an interview right now. Yes, Father Time. Oh, well, uh, may we have a picture? Go ahead, Bonnie. A pretty smile now. Smile? Oh, excuse me. Thanks. Hey, about that interview, when may I see you? Oh, uh, some other day, the next week. Where? The first will phone you. After that interview, when may I see you? Oh, you oh, oh, a oh, It's a great story. Hey, what is this, anyway? That's what we're all trying to figure out. Me, all this wouldn't have happened. <laughs> what about the police? Haven't they been able to see you? Fortunately, no. Fortunately? Yes, very fortunate. I give a gym as you lost, except for this way. He's hidden away at Springdale in the old mansion. You'd be better off in the family cemetery plot. Yes. Sorry, but it's true. Yes. Six months ago, we made an astounding discovery. It was so far in advance of anything that's been done to date that Jim decided to be the guinea pig for this experiment himself. I tried to talk him out of it, but you know how stubborn he is when he gets an idea in his head. He made the experiment, and unfortunately, it was a great success. So great, in fact, that we've been unable to counteract the result, and Jim... He's still alive, isn't he? Yes. And the story of his disappearance was a fake? Yes, I put that out to cover the whole affair up so that if the worst comes to the worst, it stays in a great deal of unpleasant life. So, what does he Prepare yourself for a great shock. I guess. That's an abrupt stop. <laughs> <laughs> Whiplash. He wanted to be able to do uh, George Costanza's father's move there. <laughs> Short stop. Oh, there's always the secret lab, man. Yeah. Oh, 
Oh my God, it's Bigfoot. Oh, no, it's just a gorilla. Ah, oh, Jen just keeps keep kicking you out. Intimidate a gorilla. Oh, I shouldn't have had that biopra last night. Get them, Wolverine. <laughs> That's what it kind of looks like. Oh, him sad ape man. did to me when I was in the cage with them. <laughs> yeah. How are you coming with that ghost yarn? I couldn't get a thing out of her, I suppose. Now I'm going through the board. Boy, is she a screwy dame. I don't want that junk. I want a personal interview. And get me some more pictures. Good one. Barney Smell. I'm sending someone down to replace him. Name's Billy Mason. Okay, Chiefy. Now hop to it. And don't call me Chiefy. Okay, Chiefy. Going into the army has sure done something to Barney. Looks more like a ghost than a ghost hunter to me. Now, just what could have happened to get such a piece of tripe? Well, it's out of focus. It's underexposed and overdeveloped. It's a Bigfoot photo. It's pictures on the same negative. Is that all? Yes. Yes, sir. Take Miss Mason down to Carter. She's taking Barney's place. Yes. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Martin, for giving me the break. I'm sure I can... Ah, forget it. But remember, I'll be satisfied with just one picture on each negative. I'll do the very best I can. Good one. <laughs> Carter? Billy Mason. Okay, sit down and take the load off your feet. I'll be with you in a minute. He's going to be surprised if Billy Mason is a woman. Gorgeous. You're gorgeous. Just a guess. What went by when I wasn't looking? Do you know your person? I know that one. In fact, I'll never forget it. The first girl I met that used it either. Nice. 
Yeah, but she lied to me. Oh? She told me her boyfriend was in boot camp. Okay, Mason, let's go. Mason! I'm Billy Mason. Huh? I said I'm Billy Mason. I'm taking Barney's place, wherever he is. Well, why didn't you say so? Come on, let's go. Yeah. The Springdale, the old Brewster home. An interviewer threw you old dame to get some pictures. Good pictures, I hope. Why, the I hope? A good reporter generally gets an interview. I'm worried about the interview. It's the pictures I'm worried about. Oh, I get it. Well, listen, Mr. Brisbane. You take care of your end of it and don't worry about mine. My pictures will be as good as your interview. And maybe a little bit better. Talk to you, little Wayne, aren't you? Well, I've had to hold my own against four brothers all my life. I guess I can handle a 4F like you. 4F? And what gives you the idea I'm in 4F? Well, I can't think of any other good reason you're not in uniform. Listen, baby, you're looking smack dab at a 14 carat 1A. No dependence, physically perfect, with a personal letter in his pocket from the president. 30 days from now, I'll be Jefferson B. Carter, Seaman Third Class. Oh. Oh, yes. 30 days past September, April, June, and Jefferson B. Carter. Well, I'll take back the part of it about 4F. But the rest of it's still sad. Makes me wish I was in the Navy right now. That makes two of us. All right, sailors, shove off. It's a cool car, though. You could fit easily three feet in that back seat. What? I thought that's what he was going to ask her. You have no idea what I've gone through in the last few months. Something you felt that you know. I love his sleep back there. His hair was perfect. Well, I know he really does look more like the wolf man than an ape man. He does. Well, if I agree, he used this to stop male pattern baldness. Obviously, that's a good thing. Kind of overdosed on the Propecia there. <laughs> I think the dead birds are like an owl or something. I know he'll do anything. 
These people do a lot of staring. Oh, <laughs> you know, yes. Yeah. And, and nothing. Just somewhere right. off stage. Yeah. <laughs> Close that. James, board it up. He refused to help him any further. Did he tell you why? No. Then I have him. I'd have to commit murder to do it. Murder? Yes, cold blooded murder. You see this spinal fluid that might kill him? And there's a great possibility of this. It's just a chance. That fluid must be taken from a living person. And the taking of it means instant death. Well, I must say the house matches the old girl who would be. What do you mean? She's a ghost it. Did you say ghost? Yeah. Ever see any? Huh, it's silly. She has. <laughs> oh, goodness, she's written books about him. She's been all over the world, poking around in cemeteries and haunted houses. She just got back to the bookstore of haunted castles in Europe. <laughs> now, let's go. <laughs> That's right. Good one, Eric. Yeah. Good job. Quiet, Harambe. <laughs> Did he just drop an F bomb? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's stammer, I can't play the photograph of those. Oh, right. Very fun. It's. Oh, he's got a closed circuit TV. Yep. The male and he's, he's watching the same crappy life. movie we are. Jim is probably the same boy here from the television. Remember me? In the boat? Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is the main. Didn't recognize you with your clothes on. Get some more pictures. The others were a lot, they weren't good. Well, uh, I'm afraid it's too dark in here for pictures. Oh, no, it'll be perfectly okay. Oh, sure, it's okay. She makes pictures in tunnels. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> I'll be going, Miss Cooper. Just keep on with the prescription I gave. Oh, well, I, I will, then. Come into the library. The library? You don't mind, Miss Brewster. I'd like to know a little more about your work, your book, etc. I think our readers would be interested. Oh, certainly. What's this about? Thanks. Oh, well, it's about a man who has been killed by his own hand. I hope you'll pardon the appearance of this room, but I don't dare change the thing. The entity that has this house would never see it. It is fine. Look, keeps looking hypnotically to yeah. everywhere. <laughs> that must have been the one we heard when we drove up, huh? She reminds me of the wicked witch of the West. Okay. She does have that same look. No kidding. I thought I heard everything.
the latest attack Sasquatch technology. <laughs> Look at this, it's working. It's working. Oh. Wait, did she say galloping ghost? And that's all. It's hard to tell what any of them are saying. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> oh. What the heck? <laughs> Who's this creep? <laughs> That certainly is an ACDC. Sorry, ma'am. I'm not making it the new wave gig. Does it bother you, John? Oh, no. I just want to sleep all night, that's all. <laughs> I'm, I'm used to hearing a lot of screeching. I was thinking, Sam, right over here by the phonograph, and uh, you hold this record. like that. <laughs> yes, far away from the record player. <laughs> oh, come on, come on. Get together. Oh, God. Uh-oh. Uh oh 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 bright light oh just a moment one more oh yeah you mind sit down i'll take the galloping ghost now you sit there and try and give me a pose like you were hunting for a boat that's it get it perfect just like you've been doing yes act like you've seen a ghost like every time you look in the mirror go ahead sorry stare off into oblivion <laughs> I'll uh, send you a copy of the article. I might want to check with you later. May I come out again? Uh, I guess so. Please phone me, sir. Oh, <laughs> thank you very much. Well, uh, goodbye. Quickest interview ever. <laughs> what did they ask her one question and posed for a couple of photos? We're going to print. <laughs> what did Sandra say? What, without a razor? That's all you need. <laughs> Typical man blaming the woman too, eh? You did it to yourself, hairy boy. <laughs> you later go on to form the hair club for men. Fine. Well, right ahead. Did that guy walk there? Yeah, that dude just pops up out of nowhere. He's, he's like a demon. He's just teleporting in and out of the sea. He's using big fish. The galloping ghost, huh? Who thinks he's kidding? You mean what? Does that record sound like the noise we heard when we drove up? Come to think of it. No. Right. It freaked him right out if he just popped yeah, up in the back seat right now. He's, <laughs> he's in the trunk. Just alongside, alongside the truck, yeah. the car, without like running or anything. Like, oh, hey, did you hear that noise? I think you're, oh, I think no. you're right, John. Exactly. Oh, leave me alone. Ah. Get out, Laura. Get out. Get out. Don't come back till you bring me those bananas. <laughs> oh, that was the cure. Honey, you're breaking the dishes again. Honey, damn it, stop it. What the hell are you doing? I thought maybe he was, he was recording a new record. The lady upstairs. <laughs> Oh, not the chamber pot, no! <laughs> oh, God. It's funny. <laughs> Such an awful costume. Want to Shit, that costume is still better than some I see. Wow, he's <laughs> for 19 for 1947 too. So that costume is better than some of the Bigfoot costumes I see. They're going on a double date? What are they doing? 
everything. They're going to the cast bar. Ah. Wait. Joe, no, I have not a song in my head. <laughs> Still better than that record she played. Everybody just take your monkey for a walk. It's all good. Sure. Well, that's not creepy. Some hairy dude climbing through a window at night. Yeah, yeah. totally. Let's break in here. <laughs> through the window. Through your window. Joy. I just off loose somewhere. It's my life against somebody else, and I don't want to live the rest of my life this way, and I won't. Me, me, me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All you do is think about yourself. I what? The library. I'll be right back. Thank you. Well, he slammed it right looking. on his face. Dude. You come in here? No, it sounds like there's someone with hair in here. Anthony. Well, the captain sent me over to get some more soap on that roof of the stern face. I've already told him all I know. Well, there's a few things I'd like to check on. Anyway. Who does your hair? <laughs> hair? I, I don't know anything about hair. Oh, damn it. They figured me out. <laughs> Why is there a rope on the wall? What is that? <laughs> it's a doorbell. You ring it for service. You oh, rang. What, yeah, Lurch is going to show up to do that. Yeah. We're, all, we're already halfway to Cousin <laughs> Harambe, bring the car around. Look, I want to show you this really cool fuzzy thing. Bong. Want to? Uh, you were very closely associated with Dr. Booster. Want to? Oh, yeah. Yes. Oh. Hello, sir. <laughs> Doing a bit. Huh. Let's Keep turning. Like there yeah. you go. <laughs> Nobody mentions a 500 pound gorilla in the room, though. No. Yeah. Didn't see him at all. He's, he just wishes he had hair like that again. Oh, he was behind it. Oh. <laughs> sleeper hold, sleeper hold. Why is he all happy? Yes. He needs a spinal fluid. What's that? What does that mean? <laughs> this man has no hair. Perhaps, perhaps it will cure me. Perhaps I could drop in tomorrow sometime. And oh, there's just a few more things. Uh, how do I get the sound? <laughs> how about you get the hell out of my house? Oh. I'm sure he's the same blood type as me. Oh, I guess that's all. Oh. Thanks, Mark. I'm not at all. Oh, if you think of anything else in connection with Dr. Booster, let us know. Looks like you still can use a lot of help. This is wide all right, I will. Dang. I know. It's like, I think he left a uh, hanger in that jacket. <laughs> oh, no time to get his wallet. Nope. Stop! I take the blood from the bald man. That should cure my hairiness. <gasps> Jeeves. Well, they're all named Jeeves, right? Of course. And he's a quart low, <laughs> and he's bald now. Oh no! <laughs> it's, it's yes, less Anthony, it's Bella Lugosi. Dash and dine. Could you send two pizzas over to my place? No one but one of your men. I'm a bald dead man. I'm not. Wait. 
He's, he's calling the police, and they just walked out the front door. Just, you know, stick your head out the window. Yeah, it's still there. It's showing you haven't even made it out of the building yet. No, no. Right there. About that. Strangulation. By someone with terrific strength. There's the mask on his throat. Ooh, a burned popcorn. Oh. Yeah, he's dead all right. Well, it's got my DNA on it. Holy crap, I did it. And he's got a triple. Well, that's why I am. Hello. Grab a puff of hair. Hey, isn't that the guy we saw at Brewster? Ah. He does look like it, doesn't he? Yeah. Hit a sickie. Okay. What's happened to him? Just lost his butler by a strangulation. Mm -hmm. Stop trying to pin it on an ape. Can you tie that? Here. Well, I see you got something on the film anyway. Now, let's know, man, River. Uh-oh. Trying to pull a Barney, huh? What do you mean? Two pictures for the price of one again. Look at that. Where? Right there. <gasps> well, she that. hasn't moved since the picture. What is it? How did it get there? <laughs> well, it's a gorilla to me. A gorilla? Oh. Don't ever don't. What heading does that oh. come under? Quick photography? Is it a game? I didn't no, it's know. It's a pareidolia. <laughs> Come on, Cosmo. <laughs> Cosmo, you're just too negative. Hey, wait a minute. They oh. the galloping ghost from Glen Raven, or whatever his name was, in the flesh. Remember those sounds? Yeah. That's the way a gorilla sounds. Well, not much of a tar there, but could be. So, the butler of the guy we saw there was murdered by an ape. I wonder. What are you going to do? Try to tell the boss a bill of goods. Did you want me to go? Hold on, honey. You stay right there. <laughs> hey, maybe you're my lucky number. What? That's <laughs> very observant. I got this. Yeah. I got this. Louis. Find this Louis. You know you've got it? Yeah. That's what I expected. He said he wouldn't be. I do. He is going to make the injection. He refuses. I tell him. Yeah. I mean just what I said. Because there's only one needle of spinal fluid in a body. Oh, it's been TV on. Oh, oh look at that show TV. Again. <laughs> I just invented DoorDash. Come over here and drop my pants. Oh, another secret yeah. passage. I lied to the police to save you yesterday and made myself almost as guilty as you are. But I won't incriminate myself any further. I'm through. Oh, no, you are not. Oh, he's going to let the gorilla kill you. I'll go to the police and tell them the whole story. I'm through, I tell you. I'm through. Come on, Harry. Oh. And he's got a piece. Ready, doctor. 
Granny's got a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, was that that dude that pops up everywhere? Yeah, the peeping Tom guy. In the butt? Oh, when it's fine. In the spine. I got you. <laughs> Gee, I don't, can't watch this. I don't know how that guy gets around so fast. He must have a Vespa. He just called it Uber. Posture's not straightening any. Why is he doing it? <laughs> Why is the monkey doing it? Monkey see and weird guys see and do, I guess. I, yeah, I guess. I think the gorilla's the smarter one. Ah. Walk like a man. Stand up straight, but I still got a beer belly. Oh, upright man. Wait, he went from ape man to homo erectus. The next movie. Wow. Yeah. To be continued. <laughs> He's a much better driver than uh, the other guy. Why did you crawl? Nobody ever used a driver's door back then. <laughs> to be fair, the front seat's about the size of a small apartment anyways. You certainly are. I, I did. But, but, uh, your I think he's just hot for Or uh, out of order, maybe. Have you he just enjoys her music on that yeah. one record. Funny thing, I know a fellow that had a telephone that was always out of order. Well, uh, we, uh, go in with the galloping goats. I don't think she appreciated the galloping George John. I bought the same story for a funny edition. But he does want me to work on your brother's case. Has the police got anything definite to report? No, he's completely disappeared. I don't understand it myself. Said, suppose work had anything to do with it? Nervous breakdown or amnesia? Anything like that? I don't. We keep him in the cage with the gorilla downstairs. His work was difficult, wasn't it? I think I heard something about his terrific experiment. Yes, he has a very scientific mind. Yeah, just like my uncle. <laughs> his house was always full of guinea pigs and rats, even monkeys, big ones, too. <laughs> Scared the daylights out of my head. Oh. Yeah, one day she just up and left them, and I don't blame him. Just imagine that door right now and coming face to face with a gorilla. Oh, but I suppose you're used to that sort of thing. I understand that your brother did a lot of work on gorillas and apes, didn't he? I would know. He never discussed those things to me. Gorillas are apes, dude. Well, I guess you can't be any help to me. I will uh, just have to dig up what I can for myself. Okay. He's not a very good investigative, investigative reporter. 
Did your brother have a laboratory here in the house? See, he couldn't even trust media back then to be correct. Yeah, All right. Find something there that might give me a lead. Well, thanks and goodbye. Bye, Mr. Sutter. What? A very clever young man, that. Yes, I heard. Well, I guess young compared to you, Granny. You think the two of you, George and permanently? I don't know. But it's useless for him to look to me for any more help. I warn you, I'll go to the police first. How many hiding spots are there in this house? <laughs> what a creep. That dude is like everywhere and he's always got that creepy smile on his face. Whew, smells like wet dog down here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm shrinking. Damn, now I gotta kill another ball guy. Time to go kill again, Bobo. The milkman. The term going ape shit came from. <laughs> Only the shadow knows. <laughs> yes, uh -oh. uh, three. <laughs> ape man runs wild. I do a little shopping too around here. Not really conspicuous sneaking around there. Yeah. Oh, that casual gorilla. I wouldn't go around that way if I were you. Well, don't ask questions. Come on. I'll when just believe you. And not one single suspect brought in. Where'd that put us? Right on the spot. Oh, it looks like it's committed by the same person, Captain. Outside of that, we haven't got a single thing to go on. Uh, Check the Empire State Building. Give her the command and give himself up, huh? Now, <laughs> get out and get that guy. We're out to transfer you so far back in the sticks. The bears will be chasing up the trees. Come on now, get out. Get out. Comfortable? Well, hello, stranger. Have you been all week? I thought your draft board is caught up with you. I've been parked in the bushes outside the Booster home so long, I nearly took root. Waiting for the galloping ghost to go by? No, I've got a hunch there's something truer than ghosts in that joint. Well, why didn't you let me in on it? 
Because if my hunch is correct, there's no place for a babe in the woods like you. Oh, by the way, if you need any more body pins, you'll find mine in the second drawer. <laughs> Thanks. That phrase would have been a, a instant sexual harassment suit now. <laughs> I will see you at HR, sir. That's it. Going straight to HR with that one. Spammer. Did they do that back then? They just go ask the operator that has to manually plug the thing in. What? Uh, how soon did you hear? He's not coming. He's not coming. That's what he said. My. Who's he's already? Not coming for Christmas? Oh, second death. Quick. You killed his butler. All right. Yeah. Doesn't matter. James, what are you going to do? You'll have to come here. I'm going to him. But you mustn't. The police are watching him. I don't care. I'm going. Oh, oh boy. And there goes Granny. Oh, yes. Just put Harambe out of a job there. Kill his own people. His sister. And he wonders why He's good health is hard to find. Expecting someone else? No. No, I'm not used to it. I was expecting someone more hairy. Mm -hmm. A little touch up on the hair, new pair of lips, and you're as good as new. Where are you going? Back to my listening post. Lucy? Uh huh. Can I go with you? Uh huh. Well, why not? I'll face the little girl. There's too many snakes, frogs, and lizards. Big ones, big as alligators. Besides, if I have to run, I don't want to wait for you. Dude, oh, uh, you keep that up and you're going to live in HR. That's <laughs> it. He's alive. Oh, Granny wasn't dead. You know that. Didn't learn to lock your window the first time? I have to kill you before they got here. So be careful. It's here, George. Bang of it. Look, it's enough for half of that injection. I can't fail. Come on. Bang it. Uh, 
You are going to do it, you hear me? All right. Here. <laughs> Take your gun out and shoot him. Oh! Granny had the gun. <laughs> wow. Really good to hear. Run! Run! <laughs> Some new shocks on that. You did not know how to drive, right? <laughs> I, hope she, I was kind of hoping she ran over that creeper guy. Who's going to what? Uh, He'll pop up again. Goes. There she oh, goes. oh, them silly dames. <laughs> That's high security on that mansion. <laughs> so I got you on my ring doorbell. Hello, ghost. Oh, little investigative. Uh, <laughs> that that hat. She's gonna sneak up on everyone. It's camouflage. <laughs> what the hell is that on the wall? I don't know. What is it? <laughs> throwing off a weird shadow. a Scooby-Doo bit <laughs> sneaking around each other. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Internet has had enough of this. I'm waiting for the part where they're both backing around a corner and back into each other. You almost got that with the butler scene. That is so like Scooby Doo in one door, out the other door, and it starts <laughs> racing back and forth in the it's, hallway. It's literally the multiple doors in the hallway that they go in and out. Of. Yeah. <laughs> Scoop. They need to speed it up and add the Benny Hill music to it. Smells like Scooby snacks in here. Uh oh.
Drop your purse. <laughs> Thought that was the same door. Not the Ming vase. <laughs> oh god. Jeez, what to decapitate him. Yeah. Great. You never call me babe again. <laughs> <laughs> Give her a Vulcan nerve pinch for that. <laughs> you seem to be standing up a lot straighter right now. that and her hair still looks great. Yeah, goodbye, what? Baby. His fingers got cut. Did you see that? <laughs> he's, 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 they're straight. I have to admit, I like the guy playing the background accordion music to the show. It's very <laughs> intriguing. <laughs> That's a rough landing. Jeez. Well, baby. Give me the plate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Claire, Randall to warn him about someone. A whole one. Oh, time to wake up. Oh, right. sorry. What? What? Okay. 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 Go over to the booth at home as quick as you can. There's trouble over there. Take her with you. Come on, lady. Come on, hurry up. He said all that that quickly? Oh, I'm sorry. He used, he, he used caller ID. <laughs> Why are you screaming? Is that too clear? Oh, the old run around the office furniture bit. She's not up in the chair. That's I need it for the party today. She is no Indiana Jones. Going on. That's banana! 
Oops. Oh no. Oh. Uh oh. Yes. Attract more attention to yourself. What? I killed him for you. Open the door. I've got a horny gorilla. Do. I think she used the force. <laughs> she okay. stepped on something. And... Oh, right. Oh, oh, the was... she... ah! oh, like... I just ah. wanted a banana. It was beauty that killed the beast. <laughs> I think that was a Kevlar vest he was wearing, anyways. The breathing. Come on, the dude in the bushes got to pop up anytime now. Yeah. You know, I'll go over my knee and paddle you good. Oh, Whoa. Whoa. Did he say hey. paddle you good? What are you good? doing in my car? Who are you anyway? I'm talking to HR. No oh, I'm soon. the author of the story. What? The idea wasn't. Oh, brother, cheesy. Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh, no, buy war savings stamps and bonds. Oh, oh. gosh. Wow. Holy oh, smoke. That was torturous. Funny. Leave that. <laughs> yeah, that's where we were, what, 70 years ago? Yeah. I'm terrified. Wow. I'm terrified. They just had a cell phone. All this could have been avoided. That's <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> just a cell oh phone. That's all you need. Cell phone, ring doorbell. What a twist. Oh, what a twist. So what do you guys think of the ape man? I thought it was kind of good. It was okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm glad it was only an hour long. But yeah. <laughs> I think you needed more bananas. More, more bananas. Yes, we have yeah. no bananas. But At hey, least his costume looked better than that paper mache monster last week. Yeah. yeah. But as somebody <laughs> said, you know, this did take place in 1943, you know, during yeah, the, middle, the war. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I think they did the best they could at the time. <laughs> and uh, that's what happened. But we are going to take a five minute break, folks, and then we'll come back and we. We'll start up with the next show, uh, Making of Mankind, presented by Richard Leakey in the beginning. Homo. Nice. So uh, see you in five.
And we're back, everybody. That was a five minutes. I hope everybody takes your seat. And uh, we're ready to go. You guys ready to go? Yep. Okay. Let us position ourselves correctly. And um, that looks a little bit smaller, doesn't it? Let's see what I did. Is that hey, the top? Oh, God. Oops, did it do it again? It did. Why does it keep doing that? Oh. Might be. There we go. There we go. Matt looks like he's been filming out in Florida again. Hear no evil, see no evil, speak no evil. Ah, there he is. There he goes. Right. Now he's gonna have to go find a bald butler and get the stuff out of their spinal fluid. Yeah, oh, there he is. That's him in the future. He's changed into Bella Lugosi. <laughs> Yeah, this is a little outdated now. One and a half million years ago, there were people living in Africa. We can reconstruct exactly what they looked like. Every single one of us can trace our distant origins to people that looked like these. They too had an ancestry that goes even further back eventually to primitive ape-like creatures living in tropical forests. This is the remarkable story I'll be tracing in this series. God, I got hit by a plane. I've been engaged <laughs> for the last 15 years in a search for our ancestors. It was this quest that originally brought me to Lake Turkana, the so-called Jade Sea in northern Kenya. It was in Africa that my parents, Lewis and Mary, have made many important discoveries concerning our past. Originally, I didn't want to follow this family tradition. The last thing I wanted was to be a fossil hunter. Eventually, however, the challenge proved too strong. I realized that, like my parents, I also wanted to know where we came from, to know what made us human. It's this curiosity which brings me and a team of colleagues here each year. evidence we are looking for may be found in these eroded gullies and slopes around the lake. They are littered with the fossil remains of animals which lived here over the past three million years. Among them 
are clues to the origin of our species. When I discover a fossil or somebody else finds a fossil and shows it to me, a fossil such as this, it's very, very exciting. I realize that I'm looking at something that's never been seen before by modern man. It's not just a bone to me. This is a bone of one of my ancestors, but also one of your ancestors. That, to me, is interesting. All of us have a natural curiosity about the early lives of our parents, our grandparents, our great-grandparents. We're all somewhat interested in history. We like to know how people lived in times before. Well, by studying fossils, one can, in fact, do that. But we're not talking about simply hundreds of years. We're talking about hundreds of thousands of years. In fact, we go back millions of years. We can, by collecting and studying fossils, tell the story of mankind almost to 10 million years ago. We can determine how creatures lived that gave rise to us as a species. We can begin to understand how we as a species have become so remarkably successful on planet Earth today. The Earth was formed some four and a half thousand million years ago. Our success as a species may conceal the sobering fact that compared to this inconceivable length of time, we are very recent arrivals. Life itself didn't begin until about three and a half thousand million years ago when the first single-celled organisms appeared. Some 700 million years ago, the first complex organisms appeared and life began to swarm in the seas. Life on land began with the amphibians about 400 million years ago. and the great age of the reptiles began about 300 million years ago. <laughs> the first birds appeared 200 million years ago, which was also the time of the first mammals. A mere 70 million years ago, we see the first primates, and only 30 million years ago, the common ancestor of apes and humans. The apes that evolved from that distant ancestor remain our closest living relatives. It's a remarkable fact that genetically we are closer to these chimps than say a horse is to a zebra. So how and why did our paths diverge? Why didn't we all turn out like the chimpanzee? Why did they remain in the forests, while our species moved out across the globe and even beyond? Why has he got cleats on in space? It's taken us millions of years to reach this point. Just so you to could ask that the question. For our spectacular success, we have first of all to know exactly what kind of animal we are. Our world is divided by countless different cultures, colors, and races. Whenever we establish a new camp in Takana, the local people always formally welcome us. I'm impressed most, not by the differences between us, but by the overwhelming similarities. <laughs> all of us belong to one single species. We all share a common ancestor. In searching for our origins, we'll be looking for those fundamental characteristics that set us apart from all other living creatures. We are the only animal that regularly stands and walks upright. What led to this extraordinary development, and when did it first happen? Hey. 
we're the only animal that regularly makes and uses tools and weapons. It was tool making that enabled us to master and manipulate our environment. How did we make this breakthrough and what was its impact? Long after tools were invented, we learned to harness fire, something no other animal does. This too was to have a profound effect on our way of life and on our environment. We developed complex social groups, which were based on food sharing. I want to trace how this pattern of life developed and how it turned into the complex societies of today. And also how it helped develop that outstanding characteristic of our species, our large and complex brain. Making me hungry. Those species whose young remain dependent <laughs> on their You got to catch your fish like that guy did. Any other animal. Why this should be and the impact it had is also part of our story. Yeah, but do I have to start the fire the same way he did? Because, yep. How did we yeah. develop a complex language that is arguably the most efficient communication system in the animal kingdom? The basic pattern of human life for more than a million years was that of the nomadic hunter gatherer. I'd say he's got me out fast in that area. A more settled way of life, one in which plants and animals were domesticated. A step that led directly to the world we know today. All these elements are undoubtedly a part of what made our species so successful. Their origins go back an amazingly long time. These are the questions I'll try to answer in this series. Essentially, what is it that makes us human? To do this, we must look at much more than simply old bones. It's a story that's relevant to everybody. It's Pizza. just as relevant to the people who are sent into outer space. Pizza makes us human. As it is to those living in the remote apartment. Joe, the younger yeah. audience. How I want pizza. Homes, watching the the younger audience would say TikTok is what it makes. What makes us human. Of a single yeah, human species. It's relevant to everybody on planet Earth today. It's a story that, interestingly, only we can tell. We're the only animal that can look at its own past and understand it and document it. This sense of belonging to a single common species is important. I believe it's one of the most important things we can draw from our prehistoric record. Because today, when we face so many difficulties, I believe it's of value to face them on the basis of a single species, a single people. I want to start our story here in the African Rift Valley. It runs from Ethiopia in the north to Tanzania in the south. Along its floor are a string of lakes, remnants of larger ones that once existed here. Our ancestors lived alongside them for millions of years. They're ideal places for life and also for the preservation of a record of that life. lakes are fed by rivers and seasonal streams created by sudden tropical storms. These streams drain off from the highlands and carry vast amounts of sand and silt. You can see on this model what happens when these rivers arrive at the lake. As the water slows the sediment is deposited on the lake bottom and also along the shore. This forms great fans or deltas, creating new land. If the lake rises, as here, 
a second delta is formed on top of the first. The process continues until the sediments are built up to a huge depth over a large area. This is still going on today at Turkana. The delta around this river is newly created land. And the animals that have always congregated around these lakes are inevitably caught up in the process. When the animal well. dies near the edge of the lake, there's an excellent chance that its bones will be quickly buried and so be protected from the normal processes of decay. So this modern hippo skull will very likely become part of the future fossil record. What happens to the hippo is also what happened to the bones of our distant ancestors. When the rivers and lake flood, as they do each year, layers of sediment are deposited over the bone. Eventually, this build-up of sediments forces the river to change course. Its channels move back and forth over the years, dumping sediment over a wider and wider area, until the whole floodplain is covered with layer upon layer of silt and sand. The hippo skull is now many feet down. The original land surface on which it lived could in some cases be covered by hundreds of feet of sediment. If the sediments are of the right chemical composition, the bone will become fossilized. That is, the organic material is replaced by minerals. The bone becomes a stone. If it remained buried below the present land surface, we would have very little chance of finding it. Luckily, nature has done most of the job of excavation for us. Wind and rain erode away the surface. Streams cut back through the sedimentary layers, exposing the various levels. The whole landscape is scoured and gouged by these natural forces. The fossils are found literally eroding out on the surface. Hmm. All things considered, this is actually pretty good. Surface water rushing down the slopes. Notice there, nobody's talking. <laughs> We're all listening. No, it's just... It's an education. It's it's. This is still all valid today. Stuff he's talking yeah. about. Within a short period of time, however, the fossil bone could be reburied or broken up, and the fragments scattered. You have to be in the right place at the right time to find the best fossils. I came to the right place almost by chance. In 1967, I was flying up to the Omo Valley, the north end of Lake Turkana. I presume my pilot wasn't paying attention like I'm not at the moment. He was on autopilot. That's and not good. We <laughs> the side of this lake the he was time. drunk, like most pilots. Then, yeah. I saw these fabulous sediments, these deposits that were laid down here millions of years ago. Before that time, nobody had suspected that there were sediments in this part of the world. You can see how the deposits are stratified, how their volcanic ashes interbedded with them. You get an impression of a vast lake, and it was to that area that I came in 1968 to look for fossils and where since we've been finding different animals embedded in these rocks. During the field season, we go out every day to search these exposed sediments. It's exhausting work, the temperatures often over a hundred degrees. Yeah, not my idea of work conditions. Occasional lion had interest to our work. You gotta meet yourself there, Joe. Most of the fossils have been found by a team of Kenyans, 
who have an extraordinary skill spotting significant finds amongst this jumble of rocks. When you find a fossil, you have first to determine how old it is. You can't date the bone by its carbon-14 content, as all the carbon has long since disappeared. That's correct. What we attempt to do is date the rocks or sediments in which it's found. One of the best ways for doing this is to date volcanic materials that are laid down in the same sequence as this bone. In this particular area, and in other areas of Africa, there are sites where there are volcanic ashes, or volcanic tufts, as they're called. We Those wear short shorts. We have one just above this hippo, which would give us a very good indication of the age of this specimen. Run, Forrest, run! <laughs> Those ancient volcanoes that erupted round Lake Turkana were similar to the recent eruption at Mount St. Helens in North America. Ah. That is, they were primarily volcanoes that threw out millions of tons of ash, rather than red-hot lava. Wait, when did that happen? We can determine how long the ash has been there. The ash has a built-in atomic clock, as it were. Major eruptions are often separated by long intervals of time when life returns to normal. Oh, he's not going to get hit by a car, is he? Oh, shoot. Dang it. In many Rift Valley sites, <laughs> there are numbers of ash layers separating sediments which contain the fossils. So fossils can be dated by their position in this volcanic sandwich. <sighs> Sandwich. When you find fragments of bone washing out of these, I know he said areas, sandwich made me hungry. It's not magic to identify them. The popcorn just it's like doing it. It's easy to tell the difference between the various sorts of animals, and indeed the difference between the different parts of the skeleton within the various groups of animals. Enzo was supposed to bring the pizza. I don't know what happened. Bones is rather like distinguishing between broken crockery. I didn't get the memo. Anyone yeah. can tell the difference between a plate, a cup, a saucer, and a bowl. But if you break that crockery, break it into individual pieces, it becomes much more difficult. And yet even there it's possible. With fragments of bone, it's certainly possible. And from those fragments, one can learn a tremendous amount about the animals that the bones belong to. Bones from the same part of any animal always look quite similar. For example, a baboon's thigh bone and that of a gazelle are the same basic shape in spite of their size difference. Teeth can tell you even more. The large flat molars of the bear, for example, are specialized for eating vegetation. In contrast, a hyena has teeth designed for crushing and tearing flesh. Wow, those like are that hyena teeth? Fossil teeth can be easily wow. matched to the nearest like living counterpart. It does. Ah. This is a saber-toothed cat. And clearly, it was eating the same sort of thing as the leopard. Huh. Even though it is long extinct, we can tell something of the life it was leading from its diet. Rump roast! The fossils that give me the greatest excitement are those belonging to our ancestors. Ah, uh, Inamoto as well. Is it not Yes. Is it not Yes. Let me guess. Skull fragment. When we find a human fossil, everyone's drafted in to search for more. This is a fragment of upper jaw. It probably belongs to the same individual as the skull fragment. It's one and a half million years old. Wow. What? Now that takes a trained eye, man. Everything we find yeah, that just looked like a rock to me. <laughs> to our base camp at Kubifora on the shores of the lake. <laughs> it is here that we usually make the first examination of the fossils. 
You don't even see the impression on the stone. Well, so you do have just them. died with its mouth open. <laughs> Where's yesterday's day? Many specimens are incomplete. It's a kind of jigsaw puzzle, with unfortunately most of the pieces missing. If we're lucky, we can reassemble the scattered fragments. But we do find more complete specimens. We've now got remains of over 200 individuals, represented by almost all parts of the skeleton, including various limb bones, as well as jaws and teeth. The most important of all are the complete skulls. But these bones are just the beginning. You can take the skull and you can set it against where it was found and a geologist can tell you a great deal about the environment in which that individual lived. The paleobotanist can tell you about the plants that were growing there at that time by studying the pollen. The anatomist can take the skull or part of the skeleton and by looking at the markings on the skull can put back the flesh. And by putting back the flesh, we can begin to get some idea of the soft tissues as well as the hard tissues. And through this, we get a very precise picture of what the individual actually looked like. This, for example, is what we think one of our ancestors, Homo erectus, might have looked like. Oh, he blinked. The appearance Animated. is deduced from the skeleton. <laughs> the tools and bone refuse he left behind are a good clue to behavior. Gotta be honest, this is pretty good. I was not expecting this level of detail. And again, dude's making me hungry. <laughs> it's it. Just want to rip the liver out of a deer and just start eating it. One form changes into another. The process by which this happens is fundamental to our story. It's been known as natural selection ever since the days of Charles Darwin. His Origin of Species was published in 1859. When the popular view was that all animal species oh gosh are it's like daniel benoit's the dad result of an act of divine creation darwin proposed that animals had changed and offered a mechanism to explain this i think darwin's greatest insight was almost certainly his recognition of the fundamental importance of individual variation within a species and his idea that nature worked on this variation to produce gradual change in that species. Indeed, he wrote in Origin of Species on this very point. If variations useful to any organic being do ever occur, assuredly individuals thus characterized will have the best chance of being preserved in the struggle for life. And from the strong principle of inheritance, they will tend to produce offspring similarly characterized. This principle of preservation or the survival of the fittest I have called natural selection. It leads to the improvement of each creature in relation to its conditions of life. All animals are in competition for the resources of their habitat. Natural selection ensures that traits... I wonder what crimes those horses committed. ...competition will be selected for, whether it be at faster turn of speed, keener eyesight, or hearing. Out there making license plates. A strong zebra out in that Kenya. can chase off rival males stands a better chance of getting more mates and so having more offspring. Natural selection leads to animals becoming adapted to certain niches. The giraffe's long neck is not there because ancestral giraffes stretched to reach the tops of trees on which they fed. It's there because in the past, taller giraffes could feed off bushes and trees at a height shorter animals couldn't reach. So, the taller ones had less competition, got more food, and were better able to survive and reproduce, producing more successful long-necked giraffes. The Geronote gives us another example of natural selection. What is that? It has evolved a peculiar method of feeding. This gives the Geronote access to a food source that other antelopes can't reach. So it would have been selected for. How long does it take for these adaptations and changes to produce totally new species? One of the foremost advocates of a new explanation of evolutionary change is Professor Stephen Jay Gould. 
traditionally the view among evolutionists has been that the process is in its essence a slow steady nice gradual one proceeding step by step, <laughs> step linking ancestor and descendant through all possible you get that with your diploma back in those days that was darwin's belief it was one of the controlling beliefs of his system and yet as huxley pointed out to darwin and criticizing what he didn't agree with in Darwin's origin, there's nothing about the theory of natural selection that requires this kind of imperceptible gradualism. And Huxley said, look, Darwin, you're going to be in enough trouble anyway trying to convince people about evolution, not to mention natural selection. Why are you tying it to this unnecessary and, by the way, false belief in the absolutely gradual nature of change? Huxley believed that change could occur in leaps and starts, and I believe that's probably so. Main reason being that evolutionists hold that very large populations have a great deal of inertia against substantial evolutionary change in the whole population, if only because it takes favorable mutations so long to spread through, and because you need to get so many favorable mutations fixed before you have a new form. And therefore, most biologists Is that in the show? hold that evolution was a chance <laughs> the, the, the clearest audio on there is a screeching bird <laughs> maximized in very small populations where mutations have a chance of spreading and becoming fixed with some reasonable speed and therefore most biologists believe that speciation can occur primarily when tiny numbers of individuals get isolated from the parental form and can follow their own evolutionary direction So evolution may not be a gradual process, but one punctuated by sudden leaps or periods of rapid change, followed by long periods when animals don't change. Our story is no different from that of other animals, but this presents us with a problem. If speciation occurs rapidly and occurs in small populations, it's perfectly reasonable when you consider the difficulties fossils being preserved and then being found, that we are going to seldom find the so-called missing links, the examples of a species in transition. Nevertheless, having said that, I think it's fair to say that when we do find a fossil, the fossil is almost certainly going to be representative, in a very real sense, of the stage of the population that it comes from. It's most unlikely that a fossil will be representative of a freak the mathematical probability of finding a freak is so extraordinary as to be very difficult to consider. When one is fortunate and finds a population that is well represented in terms of numbers and is found in a situation where Big you can trace it over long periods of time, then you do have a chance of actually locating one of these missing links or changing populations. Just one example would prove the case. At Lake Turkana, that example turned up amongst the fossil shells that litter these deposits. Turkana boy. The various fossil species of snails from Turkana have been studied by one of my colleagues, Dr. Peter Williamson. In one case, the parent species, which had existed successfully for years, looked like this. The edges of the spiral are gently curved. In the same lake, some hundreds of thousands of years later, the same snails look like this. They have sharp, angled edges. What Peter found is the link between the two, and here they are. A population where some shells look like the parent, others like the daughter. It is a group sampled in the act of evolving from one form to another in a very short period of time. They are our best proof that so-called missing links really exist. I find it very strange that today many people still think of evolution as just a theory. I'm convinced, and I think many others are as well, that there is sufficient evidence to demonstrate evolution as a fact. The process of natural selection works. It has worked in countless instances that can be well documented. 
I also am puzzled, and indeed I find it very arrogant, that many people think that if evolution occurred, it occurred because we were to be produced, that we are the end product, the inevitable end product of natural selection. Nothing could be further from the truth. We are here as a result of a series of accidents, if you like. There was nothing pre-planned about humanity. One can demonstrate that if certain events hadn't happened, we wouldn't be here today. But we do have fossils that demonstrate the process by which we arrive. We can document the transformation of an ape-like creature through a series of steps to what we are today, fully modern human beings. Our story begins in the forest. It was here that our primate ancestors evolved some of the crucial characteristics that we share with all primates today. The first primate was probably not unlike a modern mouse lemur. To live and move safely in the trees, grasping hands and stereoscopic vision were crucial, and we have inherited these same traits. The ring-tail lemur is a good model for another important stage in our development. Increasing coordination of eyes, hands and brain represented a further specialization for life in the trees. I want to move it, move it. From this stage, one evolutionary path led to the monkeys, like the colobus, animals that are even more at home in the trees. All his nails landing. When monkeys move <laughs> around in the trees and on the ground, like these baboons, they walk on all fours, with their trunk horizontal. This is an unlikely model for our early ancestors. It is quite different from the way the apes move. These animals move through the trees by swinging below branches, keeping their trunks upright. It's an adaptation seen in its most extreme and spectacular form in the gibbon. It's pretty amazing. Reminds me of the New York baby Bigfoot video. I'm certainly not proposing that our ancestors move through the trees like a gibbon. The more generalized pattern of our closest relative, the chimp, is a better model. This animal moves through the trees on all fours, or by swinging below branches. On the ground, it also moves on all fours, but occasionally it will walk on two legs. Of course, we are not descended from any of the modern apes. They are the product of millions of years of separate evolution, just as we are. But we are so close to the chimpanzee genetically that there can be no doubt that we share a common ancestor. So when and why did our paths diverge? Imagine that we could go back in time 20 million years. At that time, tropical rainforests covered much of the old world. They were filled with primitive apes. They had the place to themselves, filling the niches that are today occupied by monkeys. These apes were the dryopithecines, and we have found many of their fossils. Their teeth were designed to deal with the vegetation of the forest, plants, leaves, fruits, like modern monkeys and apes. From their skulls and limb bones, we can deduce what they looked like. It was an ape-like animal, but one that moved on all fours, like a monkey. The dryopithecines were well adapted to the forest existence. 
Then, some 15 million years ago, the world climate began to get cooler and more seasonal weather resulted. One effect was that these great forests began to shrink, giving way to more open woodland and grasslands. It's at about at this time that we begin to see in the fossil record the first evidence of a number of different species adapting to the open country. We begin to get the early pigs moving out into the grasslands, the early horses, the early antelopes. And there seems to be a general trend towards adapting to this open savanna country that seems to have been developing right across the world in what we now know as the old world, that is Africa and southern Europe and Asia. The primates also responded to this new habitat, new environment that was being developed. And amongst the primates that so adapted were a group that undoubtedly came from the dry epithecines. It is this group, the Ramapithecines, that we believe we can trace the human story to. What is very interesting is that one of the major collections of these fossils have been found not in Africa, but in Asia, in Pakistan. <laughs> This is Kaur, near the foothills of the Himalayas in Pakistan. For the last 10 years, a joint Pakistan and American team has been searching near here for those descendants of the dry epithecines, perhaps the most distant, obvious ancestors of our species. What we all want to know is what happened to the dry epithecines. How and why did the human line split from the line of the apes. They're looking for the answers in the Patwa Plateau, about 50 miles south of Royal Pindi. In these arid badlands, the erosion has cut through layers of sediment that were laid down between 15 and 8 million years ago. The fossils found here provide important evidence about the earliest hominoids the name we give to the families of apes and humans. The co-leader of the expedition is Dr. David Pilbeam. We found over a hundred new hominoids since we came here to Pakistan, and which is more than double what we previously knew. Unfortunately, they tend to be rather broken and fragmented because streams and rivers uh, break up things and scatter them. We have three sizes of hominoids. The first is Gigantopithecus, so-called because it's an enormous creature. Its jaw dwarfs that of a modern human. The next is Shivapithecus, a considerably smaller creature. And finally, smaller still, Ramapithecus. They all had relatively large, thick enameled cheek teeth. They all have front teeth, which, although basically ape-like, show very large amounts of wear. This is uh, a Shivapithecus. The canines are worn down in the back and the front and on the tops, and the incisors are also very markedly worn. For a living ape, this would show an extraordinarily high amount of wear. We could conclude from this that we're dealing with animals that are still perhaps basically ape-like, but that they're using their teeth in different ways from any living ape. Why should their teeth be different? One answer came from the sediments in which they were found. By studying the fossil pollens, paleobotanists can tell that at the time of the Ramapithecines, it probably looked something like this. It is forest edge, giving way to woodland. Woodland only occurs when there are wet and dry seasons, and this affects the type of food that's available. When the weather is dry, plants need to uh, protect themselves from drying out by developing relatively tough or fibrous outer coatings to their seeds or their fruits. So it's possible that our woodland hominoids were eating uh, tougher, more abrasive, more difficult to chew food. Also possibly food that was on average um, less nutritious, processing more of it. And this is why they have relatively larger and thicker than that, thicker than that cheek teeth. This suggests that the Ramapithecines had indeed successfully moved into woodland and more open country. 
David Kilbeam is prepared to speculate about other ways in which they adapted to these conditions. All of them probably moved in basically in the way that the living apes do. They probably had relatively short trunks. They moved in the trees and on the ground with their bodies more vertical. They would have hung below branches. I think it's quite reasonable to conclude that an animal as small as Ramaphysicus, when on the ground, would have moved bipedally quite a lot of the time, and that this tendency to be upright would have been reinforced if it was also feeding on the ground. So far, neither David Pilbeam nor anyone else has found enough fossils to prove that Ramaphysicus walked upright. But it is interesting that these fossils are found in what was once the kind of open woodland where we find all later hominids, the name we give to the human family. So they could represent the first real shift towards us. When I started work here seven years ago, I thought that I had a pretty clear-cut understanding of human evolution. I thought that it was a relatively simple process, and I believed that the earliest hominids had differentiated from the apes, primarily because they'd begun to use tools and later had evolved cultural behavior. I don't think that's true anymore. We're beginning to look away from the head towards the stomach for explanations for what went on in our evolution. We're beginning to produce explanations that are related to food and feeding, to diet, to the way the food is obtained and processed. The shift in diet and habitat that happened here between 15 and 8 million years ago could, of course, lead nowhere. But David believes that for some of the Ramaphysicines, at least, it was significant. Collectively, the Ramaphysicines, I think, can be seen as the last common ancestor of the hominids and all of the living apes. The Gigantopithecus line became extinct about a million years ago. I think Chivapithecus makes a good ancestor for the one living Asian ape, the orangutan, and Ramaphysicus itself is our best candidate for the earliest hominid. I think that undoubted hominids, animals that are upright walkers and that have small canines, probably evolved in Africa between six and eight million years ago, and that they did so from an animal that would have resembled quite closely the Ramaphysicus that we have here in Pakistan. With so little to go on, even this reconstruction of a Ramaphysicus face is largely supposition. It remains an intriguing enigma. I don't think at the moment we have enough evidence to say definitely whether Ramaphysicus was or was not our direct ancestor. We have jaws and teeth from different parts of the world, and on the basis of that evidence, it's a perfectly good candidate. I think we all want to have an ancestor that dates somewhere between 8 and 14 million years. I think it gives a respectability to our species. But frankly, on the basis of those jaws and teeth, we can say very little. Despite that statement, I am guilty of saying too much. In my own popular books, I have frequently shown Ramaphysicus as standing upright. Indeed, if you look at all the popular books that have been published, Ramaphysicus is always shown as upright or almost upright. Some cheat. Some show Ramaphysicus leaning against a tree. This suggests that it may or may not have been upright. But on jaws and teeth, none of us know the answer. We have to find other parts of the skeleton. At least he's honest about it. Because the story doesn't get much better until much later. There's a period between eight and four million years where there are virtually no fossils. Perhaps we haven't looked in the right places. The fossils that do exist consist of a few fragments that fit in a small box. We have a lower jaw dating at about five and a half million years with a single tooth set in it. We have two fragments of the arm, a fragment of the upper arm and a fragment of the lower arm. We also have two isolated teeth. These tell us very little except about the shape of those teeth. And that is all we have for this long period of time, remarkably little. Much of the current research effort in Africa and Asia is being directed to try and find fossils that will fill this long gap.
we have recently begun work on the west side of Lake Turkana. We've come here because these sediments are of the right age. Some date between four and seven million years. I hope that somewhere here in this desolate landscape we will find remains of the creatures that evolved from the Ramaphythesines, creatures that must be more closely related to our species. Until we find them, there is very little that can be said with certainty about this long period of our evolutionary story. We are still not exactly certain what occurred during that long gap in the fossil record. But what is certain is that by four million years ago, here in Africa, a major event had occurred. An event that was to have crucial implications and which set man apart from all other living creatures. During that time, our primitive ape-like ancestor stood up on two legs and began to walk upright. Once that had happened, our ancestors were well on the way to becoming the most successful, powerful, and dangerous animal on Earth. Pretty funny because <clears throat> since this movie was made, they've come out with a lot more uh, finds and information since then uh, about all these different hominins and stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah, of course. You know, the more um, better technology. We have better technology to do. You know, look at the teeth and better ability to create uh, faces out of the skulls and oh i gotta turn hold on i have to turn it down now it's way loud we were running in red there. <laughs> just to get a we could hear it well in the last 42 years too they've also found better ways of searching for those fossils with yeah. uh, ground penetrating radar and things like that uh yeah. They don't have to wait after every rainstorm and go out and start looking around and see what moved. It'd be great if you could find if they could find complete skulls of every single one of the hominins they're finding instead of just fragments because the complete skull would be the quickest way to tell if the if the, if what you're finding was the, was a bipedal walker or not. Just look right. at what the hole is where the spine enters the skull. If it's direct underneath it, then it walks repeatedly. If it's at an angle, then it walks more like chimps and apes. Mm. Yeah, it's just finding all those right pieces, and like yeah. they demonstrated in the in the beginning part of it with the, the the really good animation of how a fossil was actually created. A lot of people don't even realize that much. Oh, it's tough, man. That's why that's why we have such a spotty fossil record right now. And even yeah, though they very... more and more and more, especially within just I think in the last ten years, they've found so many more different species like the Denisovans, et cetera. But uh, I mean, it's still I mean, fossilization, the process of fossilization. I mean, he, he explains some of it in the movie. Who am I getting feedback from? So rare. Thanks from, thanks from Jen. Jen, she's muted. Now she is. Yeah. Now, now she is. Yeah. yeah. That's exactly okay. what it is. Oh, okay. Joe's got a bit. Joe's got a bit of feedback. And then Joe's got noise. white noise. Yeah. White yeah. noise. Sensor. With Something. his. But, yeah. But yeah, I mean, fossilization is so super rare. It's 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 no wonder that this record. Very is specific set of circumstances body. have to yeah. happen for it. To yeah. Happen. Yeah. I mean, and I never understood how they figured out the number, but I mean, it's, you know, it's not hard to believe that probably about 98% of the species that ever existed, we probably won't even know about because they didn't fossilize. Right. <clears throat> yeah, you know, well. He, it, and that, even like he said in the film we just watched is, you know, what about this missing link between there? It's like, it's, it's, you're lucky to have found what you have, you know, and yeah. as he demonstrated after years and years of searching and you've got a couple of really small fragments of bones and a couple of teeth and that's it 
you know so you're lucky to even find that yep i think we are but what did you guys think of uh i still i liked it man it, it kept oh, me yeah. watching you know it kept my interest so it did that was there, there wasn't really anything to make fun of so much yeah. there you know because right. it was all <laughs> yeah. great science yeah. and it's like kind of yeah. hard to argue with him anyways it's like oh, yeah. he's still pretty much right that's how it works right right <laughs> um good discussion in the chat and uh yeah, it turned pretty good. Look, we're at 9-11. And um, good. It was a good time. So what I want to ask, though, is should we choose next week's show on tonight? Or do you want me to attach it to Sunday's show like I did last week? What do you guys think? Spin the wheel. Spin the wheel. Spin the wheel tonight. Yeah, why not? Try it both uh, ways. You did it uh, on your Sunday show last things. time. Let me pull up. There she blows. And How did you do it last time? Did you have a poll in the chat or did you? No, I have a wheel of names. I have a wheel. Oh, the wheel. Yeah. The wheel names. But I gotta we haven't gotten to that part of the where the wheel has been invented yet in this docuseries. So. Oh, well. Oops, but you guys are gone, so let me fix that for a moment. Uh, a moment. Oh. There we go. So here we go. And uh, do you guys need me to read those off? What we have left is Snow Beast, Knight of the Comet, Legend of Boggy Creek, Sasquatch, The Legend of Bigfoot, Encounters, Episode 7, The Hypnotic Eye, She Beast, Abbott and Costello Meets the Wolfman, Creature from the Black Lagoon, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, Frankenstein, House of Dracula, Night of the Living Dead, Snow Creature, and the Phantom Planet, The Beast from the Haunted Cave, Jesse Jane meets Frankenstein and Billy the Kid versus Dracula, and the Killer Shrew and the Giant Gila Monster. Wow. Currently on, still on the list. And I think I did even find more to put on there. I did Sadly, I've add seen them on <laughs> because I did find the giant ants, the blob, kingdom of the spiders, invasion of the body snatchers, gargoyles, young Frankenstein, Chud, and Alfred Hitchcock's The Bird. Wait a minute, young Frankenstein is in That's there? That's a great movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No that Brooks? one is definitely. Yeah. Do you want definitely. me to add those real quick? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah. Them, and then the blob. And King Kingdom of the Spiders. Kingdom of the Spiders. That's a William Shatner epic. Invasion. Yep. Uh, oops. Of the body. Snatches. The classic. Gargoyles. Oops. That was a pretty good one. Uh, I don't think I spelled that right. Goyles. I did not. Gallias. Gallias. Go wheels. Wheels. Uh, young Frank. Christian. Chad. It's Frankenstein. That's Frankenstein. Frankenstein. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, oh, I wasn't going to put that. I was going to put the birds. Okay. That's a good one. You ready? That's a good one, too. Yep. Okay, I put them in there. I can't believe those would be in there. So, we are getting ready to spin. Here we go. Spin that wheel. Spin it. Spot. And we big are bunny, watching. Big money. No whammies. Sasquatch. Oh! The Legend of Bigfoot. Is Excellent. All right. That will be next week. I'm going to write that down. Where do I write it down? I have too many sticky notes already. Very nice. I was actually going to recommend before you spun, it's like maybe you should like alternate it so that you have like a cryptid theme one week and then, you know, just a fun horror movie or whatever the next week. Um, we did discuss that, but um, this was actually Grasshopper's idea to put it on the wheel because I had used the wheel before. Yeah. And, uh, 
It's a good idea. Because I couldn't decide. So, yeah. but what happens is, is that I do have to go and kind of do a test on it because there were a couple that I had looked at and they were just horrible. You couldn't, they were so dark that you couldn't yeah. even see the movie. And Actually, I don't want to put something like that. What? The beginning of the Bella Lugosi movie we watched was, uh, it was really hard to understand what they were talking about. Yeah. yeah. Like the first yeah. like oh, 10, right. 15 minutes was pretty. I had to boost oh, the sound. Oh, what oh, I did oh, oh, I... Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's going to happen with these old movies. Yeah. You know, they weren't, a lot of them are damaged and you can see the film and, you know, they've been transferred so many times. And actually, uh, but, the second one we watched was, uh, other than the color being a little washed out, was it held up. It was still really good. I'm yeah. Really yeah. That. Yeah. You could tell it just had got heat to it or something that copy and. I sitting out in the sun. So this is what we'll do. Now, um, I am having a show on Sunday. And uh, that one is, um, what is it? It's uh, Extra Extra, read all about it. Where I'm going to be going through articles that I found with the wild man. And we'll be telling a little bit of uh, stories that are, that involve that. So... Uh, still working on the show. It is not complete. I, I usually like to have it done by tonight, but it's going to take me all of tomorrow to <laughs> pull the show together. It's about, it's about 75% there. But um, other than that, let me go back. I'm like still looking at a wheel on the other page. Okay. Uh, so we will watch that next week. And then the following Sunday, which is, uh, what is that, the 28th, I believe. There will be uh, no no show that day. That is my anniversary weekend. So oh, we yeah. will have our shows on Friday. And then the 28th, no show, because we're going out Saturday night. And I don't want to do nothing on Sunday. So <laughs> we're taking that day off. But uh, thank you guys. I think it was a big success. I had a lot of fun with you guys being on here. Yeah, that was cool. Um, you know, I didn't want to over bog down, you know, with a bunch of sound, but I um, I think it worked out if, great. If, yeah. if there's every, ever a bar fight in uh, in Zoe's corner there, make sure we just go right to the bar fight. And then we can add right to, we can right add to Enzo. To yeah, I'll, I'll hide him. under my desk here and just yeah. go straight Oops. to that. Yeah. yeah. Oops, I lost all of you guys. Hold on. There you go. There you go. Actually, the the band just packed up, but I pulled up the uh, the dance floor. Oh, oh, we... She's having fun. How do I make him number one? Oh. <laughs> it's closing uh, time. Hello. Hello. And there we go. Yeah, there was a couple of people having a good time in the background there. Oh, like, yeah, that's so cute. Yep, yep, yep. I think so. Now, how do I get you out of there? Do I, go back oh, I think Surfer forward? Boy there is going to get lucky with that other girl. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> According to the body language, anyways, <laughs> the toes are facing each other. So. <laughs> oh, fun. <laughs> so I hope everybody enjoyed it. I'm not going to hold anybody up any longer so thank you guys for being here oh that's the wrong exit i have to do an exit for here uh be sure to hit that like button people and just roll the credits